This video is going to be about uh, creating a new program and then setting up communications so that you don't see the apply, don't apply option every time you download. Um, open here is the software without a program open. If I go file and create a new project, you'll see that um, I can give it a processor name. I had mentioned in a previous video, but to say it again, this is the name of the hardware. So, you know, whatever you choose to call that PLC in your system. You could have multiple programs download to it, but the hardware name is going to is going to be what you call that processor. Uh, it's a Micrologix 1100 Series A that we are using, and the communications is what we have been setting up setting up in the lab, where you would be using Ethernet or 232 or whatever the case may be to set up um, your uh, your software. When you hit OK, it creates just a template. I've, I've said it in other ones, like in the memory one. This is just a base. It's basically what Rockwell believes everybody's start point should be. Um, and this is a great start point. One of the issues that you have is, is they don't know, Rockwell doesn't know, how your communications is set up. So they defaulted. If you look under controller, there's a series of things, properties and status and so on. I've had people ask me, for example, about... Um, the uh, you know you can uh, don't do it you can password protect it there's compilers there's uh, you can change if you made a mistake the different type of processor it's designed to be downloaded to so if you messed up you have the ability to change that back uh, you can reconfigure communications by going who active or, or setting the driver um, uh, if you go into status this is where your errors and scan times like you'll see how fast scans are happening you get a watchdog timer if it's greater than uh, 10 milliseconds. You know errors and and forces if there's forces installed in the program. You can actually search those forces here. Uh, the reason I point this out is this is also where there's what's called the uh, free running clock, which is S4 colon or S colon four, whatever bit you're after. Um, but the thing in this video I wanted to show you is that that whole apply don't apply and why do you have to do it? It assumes when you create a new program um, that you're going to use what what's their base we're using static IP addresses where we basically said the PLC has a fixed address and the uh, computer has a fixed address nothing changes that's not what they assume we want to start with um, if you come in here there's a general screen that shows you channel 0 and channel 1 channel 1 is Ethernet channel 2 you have a few options, but it's set up default for uh, 232, which is serial communications. Um, you'll see here you can set up the communications protocol and type. And this is where I say there's there's a whole bunch of different options for channel zero. Channel one is always Ethernet. It has to be Ethernet. This is how we're talking with it. We can change some of the Ethernet settings, uh, but the problem is actually right here that it wants to run what's called a boot P server. Uh, I'll explain what a boot P server is in a minute, but if you don't want that apply don't apply to come up, say I'm not going to run a boot P server, I'm going to give the PLC a fixed address. In our case, that. At the same time, I've talked in, in, in networking, you'll hear about the subnet mask, now when I hit OK, what I've done is I've told it that it's going to communicate o over Ethernet. This program I'm creating is going to communicate over Ethernet, and it's going to now use this protocol, which is the same as what's in the PLC. So it's not going to ask me if I want to change it. Is The two will be identical. You won't have that apply, don't apply error popping up. Um, quickly to explain what a boot P server is, um, it's used in, in some plants. Um, I'll open this up and shut off these so we have more room to work. Basically a boot P server, if you imagine, um, every device, every hardware device has two things. There's one, which it's called a MAC address, 
Uh, and then the second option is, of course, the IP address. To give you an idea of the difference, every PLC, every computer, every network card has this. A MAC address is, is kind of like a fingerprint. So you imagine your fingerprint. It's an identifier for that piece of hardware on the network. It can't be changed. It comes from the manufacturer. IP address is your name or the name of the PLC. Uh, it's, it's the name of it on the network. A MAC address is its hardware fingerprint on the network. The reason that difference is important is I'm saying I want to keep static IPs. In other words, I want all the hardware on my plant, my factory, my machine to keep its IP address. But sometimes what they'll do is they'll run a little server and I, I guess the best way to explain it is you open the server up and there's just a big table and in there they'll say you know uh, device number one Mac and IP and what happens is you know this would be all subdivided out into a table looks like an Excel sheet and what happens is when you turn a piece of hardware on this server reads the Mac searches down all the potential MAC addresses and then assigns it or gives it the associated IP. So the IP is always the same but it stays blank. It means that you can kind of change IPs if you want to by changing this table. That's how, that is what the default setup is for RS Logix 500. That's why when we choose to run static In, in our in our lab which we need to run and the PLC is currently or when you create a new program that new program sets up for boot P the issue is that this is what we want this is what our software currently when we create a new program has so the problem is when we try and take this program now dump it into our PLC the PLC goes wait a minute I'm currently static and you're trying to change me to boot P, do you want to do this? And of course, we're, we're saying don't apply. Um, our options would either be set this boot P server up in our lab. The problem is every PLC in our lab has the same IP address. That becomes an issue because obviously then there'd be conflicts. Two, our lab's not networked properly. And three, Windows 7 doesn't really support this all that well yet. At least our image doesn't. Um, so we're going to stay with static, but if you don't want to see that apply, don't apply option, then you can create a template program like this. Go in, create a new program, go into channel config, channel 1, and say, I don't want boot P. Deselect it. I want you to just have this address all the time. Now, when you hit OK, that becomes how this software is set up. When you try and download it, you've now changed this to static and they both have the same IP address so when I attempt to download my program now the PLC says oh well what you're giving me is the same as what I have for communications no changes I won't ask all these crazy questions about apply and don't apply